abstraction leaves a great deal more to the viewer to interpret. It's, it's intentionally engaging someone to figure something out. Often, I think, in the case of W, many of the images are a bit more abstracted in order to have a much deeper engagement experience between the viewer and what we are trying to say. I'm Edward Lita, and I'm the design director of W Magazine. I'm responsible for the design and overall look of the magazine. Some photographers, more than others, create the kinds of stories that lend themselves more to a narrative. In a story that had references to uh, what I felt were some old movie motifs, this image immediately made me think of the jungle scene in the old original King Kong film. There was a, a voodoo element, so I said, that's got to be the headline. And then I thought, how can I meld the headline with the photograph? So the headline not only uses a skull reference, but it also tries to be the basic shape of the model's body, which was almost kind of serpentine sitting in this chair. Good graphic designers, uh, for me, are people that strive for contrast. You know, one example of a fashion story that lent itself to that was Surreal State. When I saw these images, I was reminded of the famous image that Man Ray had created where there's a woman who's nude and he painted two S's on her back echoing the shape of a violin. So the typography not only appears to be two-dimensional on a printed page, but because of this shadow, now it's been raised to three-dimensional. Another example of trying to get the typography to work hand-in-hand -hand with the image was the story done by Stephen Klein. And one weekend, after seeing the images, I was grilling, I lit some matches, and I started gluing them together. And I created the word heat, brought it in the following Monday, and everybody agreed this should be the headline. That's the way the page printed. Mary Sorrenti photographed a story called, um, we called Wallflower. And all the models were in these surreal spaces. They were like old Victorian homes, but they were all seemed abandoned. You almost felt waiting for the ghosts to appear. And I wanted to try to figure out a way to get the walls to talk. But I also wanted to create a, a certain sense of mystery. So you have a headline that is manipulated to look again like it's three-dimensional. In the case of this story uh, with Kate Moss uh, that was called Hammam, I thought about a font or typeface somehow hearkening to maybe a body of water or something moving or rippling. But I took it one step further and basically created mirror images of this type and headline. Almost like when you look into a pool, you see a reflection of yourself. In the case of Merton Marcus's story called Pin Up, all of the models were styled and photographed in some of the typical pin up poses. It was a little bit difficult to find a hook with this story because the opening photograph that was chosen didn't necessarily jibe with the headline that was chosen. There were these uh, shadow elements that were being cast by some roses on the couch I took a group of pins and uh, formed the letters, brought it into the office, and we photographed it. Klaus Biesenbach allowed us to come visit his home. I took from our house to Bauhaus, and I played off of Klaus's name. And I just thought, we can turn the L into an H, which also starts to look like a chair. It allowed us to say two things by using a very, very simple device. So those kinds of interplays between the typography, the headline, and the image is something I strive to do all the time.